so hello friends welcome to mentor vikas channel here in this video we are going to see a more advanced example of the use case of use resource and use computed right and this is going to be a more practical use case which you are probably going to use in your future quick applications right so let's start with it here as you can see we have this advanced example section and i am just going to explain this but before doing all this i also willing to uh, give you some brief about this note part which is <coughs> provided by the quick itself right so as you can see here this section is all about how basically use resource act or works right so as we had already discussed use resource is used for um, making some external api request and getting the data into our component and uh, if you are willing to um, then um, change that uh, receive data in any other form you can do that with by using that use resource hook right but fundamentally this use resource hook is worked as same as that use task right but there is some difference right so as in case of use task as use task is also or as is a is a hook which basically executes when um component initially renders okay so use use task is completely a server side part okay a server side um, kind of hook which basically gives you a component right which gives you the data uh, directly right and uh, that use task is is initially loaded initially executed when there before the rendering of the component right before the rendering of this for example this ui part right so this is how that use task works right but in a same way uh, that use resources also at the very initial at the very very initial stage so when and uh, when that use resources executed that very first time it also a server side ssr uh, uh, SSR uh, execution. Okay, so what this SSR so that server side execution that the first time use effect a use resource uh, executed at the server and it gives you the computed values, right? But use task doesn't gives you that opportunity or that probability to uh, use this function use this function of uh, as in client side right but user resources have this functionality like you can you can give this this condition uh, that user resources that whenever something happens some even triggers or some data changes you should trigger user resource okay and that's this next time this user resources act as in client side rendering right and uh, one of the more one one of the main difference between as this may be probably going to ask in the interview if you are planning to be a quick JS developer right so there may be a question that okay well, how fundamentally this use task and use resource is different so one difference i had already told you right but the another difference which you have to understand is use resources returns a value right use resources allow you to return a value but instead uh, that you that use task is simply uh, also uh, simply uh, doesn't return a value but it basically it uh, act um, basically it works at the very initially even even at the server side right not on the client side first thing is this and the second thing is use resources does not block the rendering while the resource is being resolved right so because why it is so because as use resource is an async function right <coughs> so first thing is this right and the second thing which you have which you have to understand this it doesn't blocks the rendering of your component while in case of use task it basically blocks the rendering of your component till uh, it um, till this function till this use task uh, function resolves okay so both are the promises right both are the kind of promises in javascript but this use resource doesn't block the component right and um, but use task does and at the same time use resource can be can be also used as as server side uh, rendering and as well as client side rendering based upon the condition where we are how we are going to use this right and one of the and one uh, special note where that i also want to disclose here that that resource part that we use that the resource component that we used with this uh, uh, use resource is not res is not compulsory right so that means you can even use 
um, the data coming from this use resources without using this resource component. But even though Quick has given you this opportunity, this uh, component to uh, use the data in a more um, systematic way, right? So you can, you, you if it is uh, not required to to create your custom uh, hook or the custom component. Um, directly accessing this data then it is quite useful to go with that resource component right so yeah. now just move to our, our advanced example and here why it, we are we call this an advanced example because here we are we are using three more um, three more functions uh, which is three more methods you can say uh, which is provided by the quick application right so what are these three methods so the first one is about controller the second one is track and the third one is clean up earlier uh, earlier we had discussed about the track so basically what this track uh, simply does it basically tracks the value of uh, of uh, it, it simply tracks the state of our application right so whatever the state we had mentioned here whenever this the, the value of this state for example here in our case it's query whenever the value of this query changes this uh, user resource will recompute this value and return a new value right so this is how this uh, track uh, function works right this track method uh, is useful to us right now move to the second part which is here we have this about controller about controller right so as you can see here we had uses an about controller and uh, by using this uh, about controller we had created a new instance of this about controller right and finally as you can see this controller is being um, used uh, where, uh, where we had so basically the function of this uh, about controller is this uh, let's first understand this so whenever for example here we have a button okay for example uh, for example let's see here we have a button right and uh, for example i am i'm clicking this button uh, in a continuous manner for 100 times right so even though if my first uh, if so it should it should trigger a hundred API request right so basically what this about controller does to our application is it basically blocks the the previous request if a new request comes in right so in simple words it's basically blocks the previous request if new request come in within the same time frame if our uh, API is not resolved right are you getting this so that is so that is how we basically use about controller and the final thing which uh, you can see here is this cleanup okay so cleanup is the same as if you uh, are familiar with that react component right so uh, it's same as uh, when as uh, the component lifecycle which is component um, did destroy right so when when that component will um dice right for example here we have this component and when i switch the pages for example i just switch the pages from this route to some another route then this component will die right so what should our application with trigger if our component will die so this is so that part of that uh, of that application is being controlled with this cleanup function right for example you maybe you for uh, for the function of this uh, component you had created a, a local state okay a local variable uh, in your local database right and um, because you understand that uh, that variable or that uh, function whatever you just uh, store in your local storage is not being used any other part of your application right so you don't want that to be uh, existed in your in your computer anymore if this component is not there uh, if, if this component is not rendering right so you can even use this cleanup function to delete that uh, um, keys or maybe any kind of data that you have stored locally or any kind of uh, variable that you had um, sign here right assign here you should you should change its value change it to null or anything whatever you want right so that part is what is done by this cleanup function or the cleanup method provided by quick application right so as you can see here we had uh, executed this controller that about right so basically what we had does uh, that we basically destroy this about controller which just we had created um, by in your user sources right so why we had just destroyed because 
after the after after the dying of this component we doesn't require this uh, controller anymore okay this about controller anymore so basically we had aborted this so basically we also remove this controller uh, dot abort function right in a controller by just uh, assigning like this controller dot abort right okay so finally what we had done in this example so here we had just created a state so at the very initially we have this uh, four um so out of out of this four we have this component uh, resource component we have this state management library a uh, state management module we have these two hooks this component hook is used to create this component this user resource is used to uh, fetch some data external data from an from, from an external api and here we had just assigned the string type right so the type of the value that uh, that is um being used in our in our user resource so here here in this user resource function we are basically willing to pass a value and this value uh, is an uh, so the output of this uh, user resource is a value which is so the this the, this value is just a key right and the type of this value is um, so this is going to be an array of object right so that is what we specify here right so next we had created an async function as you can see here we had uses this async um, key right to denote that uh, this is an async function and here we just um, destructure uh, two of the two, uh, two of our property provided by the quick application that is the crack and cleanup and which i had already discussed its use cases right so finally we had used this track to specify that whenever the value of this quick component this quick uh, state changes we have to render re-render this uh, uh this user resource part right and computed its value once again right and if we, here we have our controller and here we just created a new instance of this about controller from here right and we had executed this cleanup right as as i had already discussed finally we just check okay if that query dot value dot length is less than three if whatever the whatever the value of that length we are getting uh in we are getting from uh, getting in this function uh is is less than three then let's return and empty array okay and else uh if this is not the case then the program will go further and you can see that we have a new url we had just created okay uh, and by uh, and by just referring uh, to this new dot url we just uh, give an instruction to our system that okay this is an url right a path so finally we had just see this okay url dot search param dot set we had finally set and queries we set all our queries so in our in our case we 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 send some queries so the name so the key for that query is that query and here we have the query dot values right uh, okay and where from where this query dot values come from as you can see uh, here we have our values oh, sorry not uh, so here we have our query and query dot value we had just assigned to this query keyword right and finally this will uh, be sent to this uh, http is so uh, not http but uh, it's it's url this url right so after getting this response after fetching the data uh, we as as you can see here that here we had used this controller dot signal right so here we had used this controller dot signal right so where this controller is coming from from here which we had just created from that about controller right so here we are just giving a signal that whenever a new request comes in uh, if uh, if previous request is not resolved just uh, about that previous request and just go from then just work with uh, the only latest one right so finally whatever the data coming from this rest we just um we just converted into the json format right and after that finally we just uh, specify that okay and finally we just want to turn this json data into this format and that format is result uh, and an object key which is that result and in this object key we have this um so here we had just uh, specified its type right and finally we have this result uh, json dot uh, result uh, output from this uh, user resource key and this value is now being uh, stored in this jokers um, variable okay or the joker state right so now you can simply access this data by simply referring to this jokers 
or you can use as in our case we had used that use so we have used this resource component right so here in this resource component we have our three states so here at the first we had just specify okay uh, which this resource is related to which resource which use resource so it relates to this one right so we just copy this and paste it here the second one is uh, we just specify here what should be done if uh, that pen if it is not resolved it is in pending state right so till then uh, we have just decided to show a loading a loading in a text right and if that component is resolved if this promise is resolved we just want to access this data and map through this function okay and map the data and finally um, use that uh, ul and li li to li tags to display these into um, bullet points right so as you can see here right so whenever i just change uh, its value it will make an api request and get the data and whatever the data is being received is uh, now being uh, mapped mapped like this as you can see let's change this change this to something else let maybe it's quick and do we have some data for this no we do not have this data uh, for uh, this keyword as you can see we we just uh, making a request of joke right and we have all these points and as you can see uh, we have all these points Let, let's let's see this in a, in, a, in a bullet points node in, in bullet point structure as this is the first this is the second this is the third so we have all these uh, datas coming from this keyword right so maybe i am just going to change this a joke or to make it more specific i am just going to uh, add some new words right so this is how this uh, will work as you as if i just go with this return segment you can simply see it's it's it's, it's nothing uh, different it's just simply in this input uh, tag in this input as you can see here this there we have our input right so in this input we just bind its value to this quick to this quick state which we had created by using that use signal right and finally we have a button to search we can manually trigger this if we don't find that it automatic get triggered so basically you don't need uh, to trigger this search button because it is automatic get triggered every time the every time the value of it quick the value of this quick has changed and why and from where it is being indicated it is indicating from this target fair target methods right which is an inbuilt function okay so finally we have uh, uses this resource to get the value of this resource this uh, to get all the values coming from this use resource and finally use this into our component to create our data okay to create our data or to create our ui right so that is how the whole um, program will work and i think this is uh, going to be a more practical way or a more practical scenario to um, to give you an an idea of how you can use this into your um, quick application right okay so i think for now this is enough and uh, we will meet you in our next video okay and in next video i am going to uh, have a discussion around uh, like uh, how you can pass states and by using props what is a props and how you can pass that props into the state so all of these are going to be in the topic of our next video so for this video um, i think i should end this here and let's meet you in our next video till then have a nice day and goodbye